I feel like I've been wanting to talk about for a while where the some of the changes came from and like how did we get where we got balance wise. So I kind of want to look at like the last big patch that there was, which was 1.35.0. So, right there. Let me pull it up. So this is the one in question. The last big patch that happened in late January. of this year 2023 i didn't expect there was going to be any more patch actually but they did announce this one and i was happy that there was going to be a patch didn't really know what to think about the changes so we're going to go over them once again um i feel like first we should have a look first and foremost how a couple like let, let's remind a couple numbers here to everyone so historically night elf has been the most successful race of all time, followed by Orc, and then followed by Human, and then followed by Undead after that. Now, if we go by year, the last few years, we had 2020, where <clears throat> Night Elf did really well, then Human, then Orc, and then Undead was last. So this is somewhat similar to what happened in the history of Warcraft other than for human and orc being inverted. And 2021 is when things really started getting dicey. And then uh, the yeah, Night Elf did best, but Undead caught up at the, at the end, thanks to Happy in particular, who did really well. And then orc, and then way behind was human. So human underperformance started 2021 and continued through to 2022, where... <laughs> This is pretty fucking bad, yeah. This was last year, 2022, where Undead's way ahead, Night Elf second, Orc third, and then Human just way behind. And this year, it kind of this trend kind of continues with Human massively underperforming. So you have Undead first, Night Elf second, Orc, and then Human 8K. Yeah, it's kind of wild how bad they're doing. So I want to go over some changes. Not necessarily all of them, so yeah, we're going to go through this patch here. It has quite a few changes, but the main ones here were, yeah, Blacksmith Lumber Cost was reduced, Peasant HP um, <clears throat> was increased by 10, which I definitely think it was insufficient. Spellbreaker Armor was brought back to 3. Control Magic Requirements was changed from Tier 2 to Tier 3. Siphon mana drain rate was uh, reduced. Polymorph was reduced. The cost mechanical crater at a sight range increase. And then uh, the tanks as anti air got better. Seems like they fixed a bug here with this. Mass teleport cooldown got increased. Staff of Sanctuary cost got reduced. Orb of Fire damage got uh, reduced. But the cost also got lowered. And Troll Editor build time, I think that Troll Editor were the most broken unit in the previous patch. I was expecting a bigger nerf than this, but they only got a two seconds nerf, which in my opinion is not enough. Then Mastery Mirror Image got changed a whole bunch. Uh, this mostly affects team games, to be honest. Then they reduced the endurance movement speeds, kind of in line with the one that happened with Undeads. They buffed Stasis Trap, they increased the Brute Strength. Some extra HP and then they uh, reduce the build time of Great Hall and they increase the Feral Spirit mana cost, but they reduce the chain lighting by the same number 10 and 10. And Tranquility cooldown got massively increased. I mean, it was broken, one minute was stupid. Starfall got reduced, that makes sense, three minutes is way too long. Mana got reduced as well, and Tangle got changed a bunch. Mountain Giant's armor got changed a bunch. They start with more armor, but then get less from the upgrade that you get. Ultra Vision requires tier 2. This is the biggest one, I think. Emulation got completely reworked, and it does way too much damage, in my opinion. 
I was pretty terrible the way they did this. Change the rule of the talent as well a bunch. Anti magic shell can now be dispelled. Thank fuck. Uh, yeah, they also changed it back. It was 300 initially, then they put it at 420. Uh, yeah, I know the aura movement speed reduced. Well, this is cloud lowered obsidian statue level increased from two to three. They reduced, so they nerfed statue a bunch. Haunted gold mine was increased a little bit. So, undead, you know, you look at undeads, they were doing really well the last few years. Then you see minus, 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 minus. They got nerfed quite a bit here. And yeah, Dark Ritual got nerfed. The mana return as well, and that was the cooldown. Wall of Illusion from two, 3 to 2 charges. And the Wall of still actually like that, 50 to 65, but they still left Lightning Shield in the game, which is kind of bad, I think. And then nerf the auras that you can find also. So, right, let me set up something real quick. Then we're going to go over the changes by race individually and where they actually came from. Just need to open a couple photos that I have. All right. Um, yeah. So somebody help me make a chart like this to figure out where some changes came from and we got like actually yeah, let me check that this is the right one because okay it was remade at some point okay let me reopen the new ad file so basically we're going to try to figure out who made a suggestion and who agreed with it so where the changes actually came from because i think a lot of people they have somewhat of an idea, you know, some people assume wrong, some people generalize or something. I really want to get to the bottom of where things actually came from today. So this is how it's going to look. So we have the human changes and I'll show the legend first. So this is all the people that gave feedback and made like a bunch of patch notes and stuff. And... Number one means gave the suggestion initially before PTR gone live. And then number two means gave a suggestion to change it on the PTR. And number three means agree. So someone that made a video or a, a patch and just wrote, I agree with this change. But I feel like the number one is the one we should focus on. Who suggested what change? So we're going to go first. Altar Hero Coast. Hero Coast. It was Remo. And go back. So the Altar Heroes gold cost were reduced from 425 to 400. Then we can go to... This patch. I'm actually not sure where I would have listed that. I mean, this is way too long for me to go through all of it, but... Oh yeah, there it is. So in Remo's suggestion, he said there is a huge difference for second and third heroes between Altar and Tyrant purchases. While the Altar hero requires 55 seconds to be built, the Tyrant counterpart is hired instantaneously, which is a gigantic advantage. Of course, in addition to that, the hero arrives at the Tyrant in the middle of the map, not in the player's base, which is almost always a big advantage. The game tries to compensate for this imbalance by having an increased lumber cost of the Tyrant hero at 135 instead of the usual 100, but this is entirely not enough to properly reflect the advantage inherent. In the situation to balance things out more appropriately, the gold cost also has to be higher for the Tavern Heroes. I.e. Tavern Heroes should cost 425 and Altar Heroes 400 gold. So, this was added into the patch by Blizzard directly from Remo's suggestion here. So that's the first change. The first change that we're going to go through, Remo suggested that. The Hero Revive Time. Revive time factor reduced from 0.65 to 0.6. Now 33 seconds, 66, 99, 110. It was 36, 72, 107, 110. And this comes from... Oh, it's, it's there. It's, com it's coming from... Safid's. 
I don't know if that's only him or everyone at W2 Champions. I tell people who send nerf headhunters or add net OP, but that's not patch notes. As a result, I, invi I invite you guys to present your own patch notes with the actual justifications for the changes. So I'll start with my own fantasy patch notes. So it's his own patch notes, all of this. And like what he suggests. Okay. All right. Um, so that's one change suggested by Remo, one change suggested by Sifid that went through so far. And now we go into the human changes. Number one is Grubby and Save Orcas are listed. I don't know why there is no, why there is two number ones. Maybe all of them suggested it in their different patch notes, and it kind of would be hard to know who suggested it first. You can try and have a look. Did he actually do this in a fucking iPhone? <laughs> oh my god. Okay, where is it? Blacksmith 60 to 50 lumber is suggested. Uh, Remo. Remo says 60 to 40, so it was mostly taken by Remo, I think we can say. As Grubby said 50. So that's two changes. Can somebody, somebody should keep track. Maybe I should. Okay, you know, I will. You know what, I will. Let me create text documents. Remote two, Safid one. We're gonna keep track. And at the end, we'll check. Next change is the peasant hit points. Number one suggested it. Number one is Annoying Walker Free, YouTuber. I don't know his W2 Champions accounts. Present HP buff plus 10, easiest to harass. Do you guys know his account on WT Champions? I don't. Nope. Guess we won't know. All right. I'm having WC3, one. Next change, Spellbreaker Armor. This is Agents. Spellbreaker, bring back plus one armor. All right. Control Magic. Okay, there are so many number ones. Jesus Christ. Agent, Remo. I think that's... Who was that? Sithrin. Safid and Save Orcas. How the fuck is there mass number ones like this? I thought there should be one number one. Maybe we... I think all of them had it in their patch notes, and then you cannot know who suggested it first, basically. Because I don't think there is, like, dates on this of, like, who... I don't know who, which one we attribute this to. Who posted their changes first? Probably Remo, I would say. Um, where is Remo's thing? This is Remo's one, yeah.
Wait, that's Remo's thing. Dude. He suggested a fucking upgrade for Footman. Give Footman a new tier 2 upgrade called Broadened Shields. 50 50 cost, research time 70 seconds available on tier 2, and this upgrade's research defense also protects against ranged normal range. In addition to the reduction against range piercing damage. Note, human has been suffering from mass spellbreaker, aka breaker wars for more than a decade now. The magic immune units are so strong and utterly oppressive in this matchup. This is like an upgrade solely to fix breaker wars, which is very risky. Remember when spellbreakers lost one armor to see less breaker wars, but then we saw even more breaker wars than before? This is like super dangerous. I really don't like this type of. Suggestion, but I don't see I don't see the breaker. Use spellbreaker. What? Make control magic require castle tech and reduce spellbreaker HP from six hundred to five seventy. Remo, what the fuck? I don't see the armor though. You guys see the armor somewhere? Hey, there is no mention of the spellbreaker armor, so I don't think this one is Remos. Unless it was elsewhere. Okay, who else was listed? Oh no, wait, we were looking at control magic. I'm fucking stupid. So Remo didn't in fact suggest spellbreaker armor. Okay, control. No, this was this one. Control Magic require castle text. So he wanted Control Magic to go back to tier 3, but on top of that, wanted to reduce the Spellbreaker HP. That's kind of nuts. Without adding the armor to Spellbreaker. Thank fuck they don't listen to everything he says. That would have been terrible. So why, did, why was Remo listed in this as 1? It says 1-3. One, Let's check Sephids. So we did say control magic requires castle. Okay, so they all listed it, I guess. So we cannot really know here who actually suggested this first. So we'll not give it to anyone, I guess. Because I wanted to be able to figure out who was the first person. But there might be multiple changes like this where we're not sure. Siphon mana? Who is this? This is Scars, the blue, the blue player surrounded. So Scars, Sithrin, and save Orcas. We can go to Scars. We can read a little bit through this. Scars, balanced thoughts and changes. Premise, there are four different types of matchups. One, imbalanced matchups. Two, historically favored matchups. Three, balanced matchups. Four, mirrors. Since mirrors should not have high priority in balanced changes, I will not consider them for now. Imbalanced matchups. Our matchups where one race is heavily favored for a long time and where the meta never reached a point where the matchup seems even balanced for a short period of time. Imbalanced matchup seems to me very likely to not change much during meta changes and therefore be stuck in place unless a balanced patch appears. There are two imbalanced matchups in the current state of Warcraft 3. First, there is Night Elf versus Orc, which is Night Elf favored. Secondly, there is Undead versus Human, which is Undead favored. I love how he didn't talk at all about Human against Orc in this as if human against orc in the previous patch was fair like it, it wasn't fair it was fucking stupid Headhunters in particular this is where you can see like the dishonesty of like some people like orc was steamrolling human in the entire previous patch historically favored matchups are matchups where matchup fairs one race considering long-term development unlike in balanced matchups there are periods of time where the unfa unfavored race of the matchup can change something to overcome the difference and get an even matchup or even a slight lead for a period of time. A good example is the current ghoul style adaptation from Undead of His Orc. Historically, the matchup favors Orc, but there are periods of time where the unfavored race can make the matchup balanced or even Undead favored for a certain time. Even though this development is possible, there is a high chance for the historically favored race to find an answer, adapt to the meta change, and be favored again. There are two matchups that fit the description. 
description. There, first, there is org versus undeads, with org being the historically favored. Secondly, there is human versus night elf, with human being historically favored. Oh god. It keeps getting worse, this thing, when I'm reading it. Matchups are even when no race is favored for most of the time. Even though there are meta shifts which lead to a favoring to favoring a race for a short period of time, it is still usual to be even or slightly fav slightly favored for the other race in the next meta shift. The next example for this effect is the org versus human matchup. When human was favored, when clap was OP, Lin didn't lose an orc against human for like two years, guys, and then he finally lost one against TH in a fucking crazy game. But apparently, human was favored against orc when clap was OP. Jesus Christ. Please fucking make it stop. This is like maybe the worst. Out of all the patch notes, you know, like this might be the worst one, I think. Jesus fucking Christ. Orc was favored when the editor showed up, and now humans tend to be a bit favored when the new mass defense footy expansion style. What the fuck? Even matchup tends to be the most dynamic and adaptable. There are two even matchups first, Orc versus human, and secondly, Night Elf versus Undead. You don't even play fucking Night Elf vs. Sunday. What the fuck are you talking about? You don't even know about the Orc matchups. Why are you talking about Night Elf vs. Sunday? You don't even play those fucking races. Oh my god. Out of this premise, I will draw conclusions in terms of balanced energies. Undeads. Statue. Mana restored. 3.0. 2.5. Banshee. Mana pool. 200, 400, 175, 350. Duration of possession. Signing, signing time from 4.5 to 5 seconds. Cross star, slow duration, 5 seconds to 4 seconds. Ghoul frenzy, attack speed bonus decreased from 35. Why the fuck are you trying to nerf ghoul frenzy? Are you fucking kidding me right now? Is this real? Crypt fin, build time reduced from 30 to 26 seconds. Cross frame build time reduced from 65 to 60 seconds. Haunted gold might build time increased from 100 to 110 seconds. Lich, frost nova mo movement speed slow. Duration decreased from 4. Three, six to four, and eight to six seconds. Tread all base attribute strength, agility plus one. Strength from 2021, agility 16 to 17. Mid wagon HP increased from 380 to 400. Human, priest, and sorceress HP increased from 290 to 300. Paladin starting agility attributes from 13 to 14. Yeah, give him fucking 20 while you're at it. Who the fuck cares about the paladin's agility? Blood made Shifen mana scaling from 1530, 45, 12.5, 25, 37.5. Defend, piercing. <laughs> oh my god. Piercing reduction decrease 70, uh, 65 to 45%. Reflect chance 30%, 20%. Research time increase from 45 to 55 seconds. What the fuck? Oh my god, dude. Arcane Tower build time increase. From 50 to... F what the fuck? A build time increase on the Arcane Tower? Is he for real? Like, like, oh my god, this, this whole patch notes is like a fucking outrageous piece. The entirety of it. Staff of Sanctuary cost decrease from 250 to 200 golds. Replenish cooldown from 100 to one, 120 to 100 seconds. Knights build time decreased from 40 to 35 seconds. I mean, let's change the whole fucking game while we're at it, you know? Like, some, some of these changes are just in there for fun. Like, fuck it. But did I forget about the rifle? Like, throw something for the rifle in there. Like, sprinkle, sprinkle a couple fucking attack speed or something. Jesus Christ. Animal war training research time reduced from 40 to 35 seconds. Orbo fire cost decreased from 325 to 300 gold, increasing the effect of decreasing healing abilities and hit point regeneration from 35 to 40% for 3 seconds. Orc, Headhunter, oh my god. Scar's talking about the Headhunter, wait for it. Build time increased from 20 to 23 seconds. So that's it, nothing else. Like the range, the attack speeds, the costs, fuck it. Just give them a couple more seconds, yeah? I guess that's enough. Kappa. Raiders, HP increased from 610 to 638 points. Plus your wolf mana cost increased 75 to 85 mana. Great hold, build time decreased. 150 to 135. Root strength reduce wood cost from 150 to 120 wood. Torrent reduce, reduce wood cost from 80 to 70 woods. Code Beast cannot devour units of five or more supply anymore. 
Which doctor include healing word in adept training? Decreasing healing word area of effect 500 to 400 duration 30 to 25 seconds 2% to 1.5% heal. Shaman purge mana cost increased from 65 to 75 mana. Night Elf Dryad HP increased from 435 to 450. Demon Hunter scaling emulation from 10, 15, 20. 12, 17.5, 25. Mana drains 7 per second to 6 per second. Keep of the Grove increase entangled mana cost from 75 to 90. Increase starting attack damage from 2026 to 2228. Moonwell decrease mana from 300, 425 to 300, 400. So it will be a slight nerf on the Wellspring this. Wellspring, increase gold cost from 75, 125. Increase research time from 30 to 40 seconds. Druid of the Claw, decrease mana from 125, 250 to 100, 200. Fairy Dragon, mana flare, max damage decrease from 100 to 90 mana. Flare, damage mana reduced from 3 to 4. Archer, HP increase from 255 to 270. Huntress cost increased from 195 to 205 gold. Build time increased from 30 to 33 seconds. Nature's Blessing. Wood cost decreased from 200 to 150 woods. Research time decreased 60 to 50 seconds. Tavern Heroes spent at decreased base strength and intelligence attributes by 1. Breath of Fire max damage decrease from 480, 800, 1200 to 480, 720, 1080. Alchemist Heal Spray heals enemy units with 35% of the healing effects. Items Claws of Attack plus 9 decrease damage by 9. So the Siphon Mana, it was in there, right? But Sith Friend also agreed with it. And there is no colors, right? These are yellow. Wait, let me check. Legend. No, yeah, all the ones is gave the suggestion. Yeah, I think we can use this one to scars though. Siphon mana, because it was in there. Polymorph. Looks like Save Orcas suggested it and then Neo, Remo, Grubby agreed. Oh no, Grubby also. Okay, let me see. Where, where was Grubby? He literally did that on his iPhone, guys. Polymorph mana cost, minus 20. 29th September 2021. So that was like a really old thing. From him and well suggested it. Sithren and Save Orcas. Where was Sithren's one? Or Save Orcas. Whose patch suggestion was this one? Fuck me. Let's reopen this. This is Sayorcas. Siphon. Fifteen twenty five thirty five. Fifteen twenty five forty here. Yeah, Skars is closer, siphon-wise. We can give him this one too. 37.5, yeah. So it's, he's 2.5 apart. All right. Critter. Grubby and save Orcas.
Mechanical crater site range 350 to 500. Yeah, exactly from gravity. That was quick. Siege engine. Only Remo's listed, number three. Let's remind ourselves of what happened to the siege engine. Barrage damage increased from 14 to 16, no longer decrease in unit level. I mean, that's, that's a bug that needed to be fixed, but the 14 to 16... This is not, this is Remo's run, right? He only suggested to reduce the HP, which by the way is pretty stupid considering how much this unit has already been nerfed. I don't think it's from him. The barrage damage. Maybe that was in something else. It's the only one listed though. I don't know. I think maybe in, not in this document, but in the one, one of the videos that he made, he talked about the change, and number three means that he agreed with the suggestion on the PTR. So we don't know who suggested the barrage change, probably nobody, publicly at least, otherwise it will be listed. So Blizzard announced the PTR, the siege engine change, and then Remo just agreed with it on the... Yeah, so we're not going to give him a number for this. Mass teleports. Neo and Remo agreed with the 10 extra seconds. Staff reduction. That came from apparently maybe Remo and Scart. We're going to give him one each. Right now, Remo and Scarf have the most suggestions that were added. Orb of Fire. Who is this? This is Monk. And Neo. Oh, that's that's when they did the show with Neo, like talking balance, basically. So it won't be list it will not be listed here. It was like in videos that were on Back to Warcraft and stuff. And number two means that they gave a suggestion to change it on the PTR, and then it went through. So the way they suggested it should change actually was applied. Let's move on to Night Elf. So for human, we only have human done right now. Then Night Elf. Keeper of the Grove. Ultimate cooldown. Grubby was the one apparently. Tranquility plus 15 second cooldown plus 15 mana. Ah, it was totally different. The cooldown was increased from 60 to 120 seconds, so I don't think... At least not in this document, it didn't come from him. Maybe in a video that he made, he said something different, but here... Yeah, here it's totally different. Plus 15 seconds, cooldown, plus 50 mana. So yeah, not, not his suggestion, I think. And then Ultra Vision on Tier 2, Grubby and Remo. It is not listed here. I mean, this is pretty old. So obviously he, might, he probably did some more videos after. I, I can't be bothered with opening all of his videos and watching them. In fact, I can't think of anything more boring to do with my time. But uh, yeah. So I, I don't know this one. If you guys want to look it up and let me know. Maybe some people have watched a lot of these balance things and uh, can maybe enlighten me. But yeah, I don't feel like opening a couple of uh, patch notes like this from people is okay. But I don't want to watch all the videos. I think I would suffer severe uh, concussions if I did. You put the Grove and Tangle from Save Orcus. Uh, fuck, which one was he? I think this is the one. Yeah, balance patch ideas. By Save. He signed his document. He signed his documents. And I think there, there is multiple in the row. Keeper of the, Keeper of the Grove Entangle, Keeper of the Grove Aura. 
the priestess ultimate mana cost. Keep up the you duration of the roots. Okay, where is the where is the ultimate? Oh, it was here. It was actually here. Increase cooldown of tranquility from 60 to 75 seconds, mana cost from 125 to 150. So he also, similarly to Grubby, suggested 15 more seconds. Whereas Blizzard was like, fuck this. 120 seconds. So yeah, I don't think we can attribute this one to anyone unless there is again a follow-up video or something by him. But as far as I know, I don't think he made any video. Maybe he did a follow-up patch or something. This thread is actually quite old. The, the balance suggested 10 months ago. So yeah, I'm not sure. So we'll not give this one to anyone. Um, yeah, nobody here suggested that and all that and all that. Immolation mana drain, immolation damage, and immolation interval, perhaps the biggest thing in this. All were suggested by Remo, apparently. The first one, Save Orcas, as well. This is Remo. Decrease Demon Hunter mana burn range from 300 to 250, but buff immolation as outline build to compensate. The Demon Hunter is much like Hodo Beast, too restrictive when it comes to strategic variety because of his ability to quickly obliterate a hero's entire mana pool. He excludes 80% of hero choices that the opponent has the ability to choose from. This is very unhealthy for the game and truly not the best game design. With the mana burn <laughs> range reduced, at least the Demon Hunter would have to enter a greater risk when going in for the mana burn. And while this would certainly be a big nerf to the hero, it would be justified and healthy for the game. Plus, we will make up for it with a huge immolation, which is the much fairer and more fun spell. Yeah, you don't play human remote, that's for fucking sure. Buff detail further down below. Fucking hell, it doesn't list everything together. There it is. Increase the immolation damage from 10, 15, 20 to 11, 22, 33 DPS and reduce the mana per second cost from 7 to 5. It would also be great if the damage tick interval, the frequency at which damage is dealt from immolation, could be changed from 1 to 0.5 seconds. This would give much more control to the players for proper execution and reduce mana burn range to, from 300 to 250. The mana burn mechanic is highly problematic in Warcraft 3 as it ends up being so terribly restrictive gameplay-wise. In addition to being anti-fun, once mana burn is a factor in the equation, more than half of all hero choices become non-viable. That is not the greatest game design and very unfortunate to enable a more diverse cast of heroes. Mana burn must be nerfed and emulation heavily buffed in order to comp compensate. You know, this is the thing. When I read something like this, like as a human, in the previous patch, you didn't even see Demon Hunter. You didn't care so much about mana burn. And then here he is saying like, oh, it's like really not fun, like playing against mana burn and stuff. Like, you need to understand you're talking in a general sense here instead of explaining which specific matchups and your own undead bias will massively resonate here in this. Because as a human, I would have never written something like this, that Mana Burn needs to get nerfed and Immolation buffed. This is, like, stupid. So really, like, you're talking from an undead POV, the change goes through, it completely destroys humans, and then, like, you know, where, where, is, the, where is the acknowledgement for that? You know? So the interval reduced was from him. The damage 10, 15, 20 to 7, 12, 18. Slight difference. It is slightly different and reduced the mana cost per second from 7 to 5. They just removed the uh, the activation. Emulation mana cost reduced from thirty five to ten. Activation cost one mana required nine. So yeah, that was in the latest patch, which was actually meant to help out with emulation. 
Okay, so I guess we can give one more to Remo, I feel like, for emulation in general. Is the one with the most changes that went through. And then Druid of the Crow. Seems like Neo, Remo, and Account Create agreed with. Brares starting, I think he meant bears. Bears starting mana from scars. First of all, I see the exact change. Druid of the Claw starting mana reduced from 125 to 100. Where are they? There we go. 125 to 100. So yeah, one more for Scars. So Scars and Remo, so far the most influentials. All right, Night Elf is done. Orc. Headhunter build time. So we got Save Orc as Scars, Agents. This is Verbrecher, I think. And Sithren. What's Sithren? Where is this freaking? Oh, yeah, he's actually right there. All right, so we're looking at Headhunter build time, which again went from 20 to 22 seconds. Let's check. Uh, Sithrain is mainly a Night Elf player, by the way. But apparently talking about all the races. I mean, as far as I know, he's mainly a Night Elf. Headhunter plus 5 gold to build, plus 2 seconds build time. Headhunters are currently, currently overtuned. Amen. All of this is their ability to ramp up their numbers too quickly and flood the opponent, as well as to replace their numbers far too well. A 3.6% nerf to gold cost and a 10% nerf to build time will still make the strategy viable and strong while tamping down on the overall imba. So it did suggest the 2 seconds, but plus 5 gold to build, which the, the 5 gold wasn't added. And then we had Scars, Agents, Save Orcas. Right, let's see Scars. Scars said three seconds. And uh, this is Sithrin. This is Save Orcas. Decrease by one the base attack. Increase the build time by one second. So they didn't go for... There was so many different changes from everyone that Blizzard kind of took all of them and they went right down in the middle, basically. Instead of changing the attack, they, they kept it very simple. Is what this looks like. And then... For Brescher, I don't even know if this guy is listed. Oh, there he is. Troll Edenter, build time increased to 24. He wanted four seconds. Everybody suggested a different time. So Blizzard went right in the middle with everything. They were like, oh, you couldn't be wrong, right? 24 seconds. He wanted four seconds. And then we had agents. Fuck, which one was agent? I'm going to close some and just kind of reopen them. Yeah, that's what that was this one, the chaotic one. Troll Headhunter, not Berserker, minus 50 range, half nerf of previous buff. Troll Headhunter and Berserker, plus one second build time. So he also suggested something different. So I feel like the Troll Headhunter, just because nobody suggested that the exact change that went through, we, I mean, either we give it to everyone or we give it to nobody. So we'll probably give it to nobody. Fuck it. I don't know. I mean, if you guys want to count it for someone, you can, but nobody exactly suggested the 20 seconds. I mean, one second is very close with, but whatever. I think just from watching this video, we can get an idea anyway. Um, mirror image. Grubby suggested that. Apparently. So mirror image. Now do 20% of the Master's base damage. 
Plane master mirror image now give XP relative to their level. Plane master, plane master blade storm. No, I think we don't care. It's just mirror image we care about. Let's check Grubby's iPhone notes. Mirror image deals 10% damage. That's the only change he suggested. He didn't mention anything about, like, um, about XP. So instead of the 10%, they went for 20%, but then they added XP so that it wouldn't be too broken, basically. So I guess we can give it this change to Grubby because it's like still very similar. The orc. Troll Batrider Liquid Fire. Safids. Where was he? Oh, there it is. Okay, so. Troll Batrider Liquid Fire no longer prevents repairs, but now reduces the repair rate by 75%. Where was this thread? Liquid Fire no longer makes buildings unrepairable. It's incredibly obnoxious, and I think 4v4 and FFA games would be better without this effect. I don't find this effect to be in the spirit of Warcraft 3. Would anyone miss it if it was gone? But there was no number mentioned, but yeah, it's. It's literally the only one that mentioned it, and it went through, so. We can give him one as well for this, since this came from him pretty much. TC Aura. How is there this many fucking ones? It could not have come from, every, from everyone. Maybe everyone had a piece of it in their, in their patch notes. So the endurance aura movement speed got reduced from this to this. So 0 0.1, 115.2. It suggested 10.17.525. Yeah, so it, it didn't suggest as much as we actually got. When it was 115.2. But it did suggest similar changes. Happy. Where is fucking... Wait, what? Oh, yeah, he has something as well. <laughs> it just said best aura in the game, nerf to align with unholy aura. Save Warcast, Sith friend, annoying Warcraft. What does it say, banditos? Sithran, Endurance, in line with Anoliora. Okay, so all of them suggested that pretty much. And 17.525, if I say what, well, guess. And. Okay, so yeah, we'll give it to all these guys, I guess. So it was Grubby, kind of happy. Say Warcraft. Knowing Warcraft, it's different. Next one, Stacy's Trap. Again, so many ones. 
Rugby Neo Savalkas agents. Stasis arming time nine to eight seconds. That the only thing is suggested. Nine to seven seconds. That's literally verbatim, right? Oh no, he said nine to eight seconds. And Remo. He okay, suggested some change, but not the exact one, right? Mm. Agents, say walkers. Stacy strap activation delay nine to eight seconds. It went nine to seven. Why did they go a little bit extra on this one? I don't understand. And then save Orcas. Decrease stasis wall activation delay from 9 to 8 seconds. So yeah, everyone... Everyone suggested a little difference. I guess maybe Blizzard wanted to keep it simple. Instead of doing a ton of changes around this, something which is already pretty fucking complicated, they just like, they're like, all right, just, let's just do nine to seven. Okay, so we'll give to all these guys, I guess that's got a one. Root strengths. Just agreements with, but no initial suggestion. Let's storm cool down. Neo agreed with. Great old build time as well. But suggested by Scars and Remo. So let's see. Great hold build time. Reduced from 150 to 140 seconds. So 10 seconds buff. He said 150 to 135. That's a little greedy, Scars. That's a little greedy. And Neo, sorry, Remo, where is he? Decrease Great Hold build time from 150 to 135 seconds. So yeah, it's, this clearly comes from them, the two most influential guys so far in this patch. Parsia Wolf, Scars, and Sithrin. So the wolves from 75 to 85. 75, 85 for Scars. This is Sithrin, right? A stand mana cost to will. All right. Yeah, that's straight and to the point. Pass your chain lighting. What the fuck? Maybe he didn't have time to do it or something. But we can quickly look. It's not listed here. Is it in Remos, perhaps? Nope. So nobody suggested that. I thought I saw it earlier from someone. Maybe. Hmm, let me see. Why is there nothing here? Maybe he didn't have time. Maybe Grubby? Fish Doctor. Nope. Nobody suggested that at all, apparently. 
I kind of want to go through all of them to just double check. I could have sworn I saw someone suggest it before. Okay, well, I can't find anyone. No, not here either. All right, and I guess it's nobody's change. Undeads. Pass here was suggested by human group of players. Okay, well, I don't have that link. Let's do undead. This is the last one. Uh, if you guys want to see so far, What the uh, numbers look like. I don't even know where to put it, to be honest. Uh, how could I show this? Yeah, so this is the tally so far. So Remo 6 changes, Safid 2, Annoying Walker 3 2, Agent 2, Scar 6, Grubby 4, Neo 1, Monk 1, Happy 1, Save Orcas 2, Sifrin 2. I'm going to keep trying to keep counts. So Undead's AMS by Safid. Anti-magic shell can be dispelled. I think the 300 health on the anti-magic shell should be treated like a summon's health in that various forms of dispel and how much damage they do to summon units should apply there. Purge 400, dispel 200, disenchant. 250, etc. It may be that being dispellable is enough of a nerf that the mana cost of the spell can be reduced or the HP barrier it provides increased later. People have called for other changes to benches, but actually, I believe the biggest problem is visibility, something WT Champions, is, WT Champions hopes to solve, resolve eventually. That would be fucking nice. Instead of having this fucking green bunch. So, yeah. The feeds three changes total. Death Knight Aura Happy Save Orcas Sifren Annoying Orcas. Okay, that was Annoying Warcraft. I don't even know how to do it. You know what? We're just going to take this as face value. And then add it to everyone. Whatever. Because I don't know if people write... Oh, no, it's DK Ultimate. Fuck, I was looking for Unholy Aura. Oh, there was DK Aura. Yeah, so... Let me, let's check at least Happy's one. How do you write it? Last night, there's no mention of this. Of the aura. Maybe it was like another... Maybe it was like another post or something that was made later. I don't know why. But like, remember that it was a nerf, right? I think that's probably pretty old. Yeah, Anoli Aura movement speed bonus reduced. So to 10%. 0.17.5. Point 0.75. And then 0 0.25 to 0 0.10, 0 0.15, 0.20. But yeah, I don't see... You know what, fuck it. I, if I can't find mention of it in there, thing, we, we're just going to leave it. DK Ultimate, nobody suggested, but all these guys agreed. Disease Cloud, that's not how it's spelled. <laughs> Happy and Save Orcas. 
So the change to the disease cloud was duration reduced from 90 to 75 seconds. Happy say 90 to 60. Ay, ay, ay. And save Orcas. Who the hell is Bandidos? I'm so confused here. This is Sithran. This is Save Orcas. Decrease duration of disease cloud from 90 to 75. Okay. I mean, we can give it to both, I guess. So happy to save Orcas. Fuck, I, I mistakenly deleted save Orcas number before, but I think it was like two or three. Do you guys remember when I showed it? Fuck it. I don't think you had that many. <clears throat> um, statues experience for a kill. Safeeds, save orcas, and agents. Oh, here. Obsidian statues level changed from two to four. It went from two to three. From two to three, pretty to Safid. And then Agent also mentioned it. All right, they'll get one. Statue mana restores spell. Grubby, Sithrin, Scars, Annoying Warcraft. Obsidian statue mana regeneration, 3 mana to 2 or 2.5. From 3 to 2. Sithrin and Scars and doing Warcraft. Three to two point five. Okay, it's there. And the last one was Agent, so I can believe that one. Which one was Agents? There's the super disorganized one. Is it this one? No, fuck, this is Remo. Oh, this is this one. Undead. Obsidian Statue is level 2.3. Level 2 to 3. Yeah, so that's it. All right, so that was Banditos is Verbrecher. Ah, oh, okay, fuck. I'd be real confused here. And the next one, gold mine. Wait, what? Which change is this? If you guys know what the change about gold mine is, I'm actually, I don't know. Yeah, I do not know. All right, let's go to next then. Oh no, gold mine. Yeah, that's undead. Fuck. I, I was thinking gold mine in general. 
haunted, haunted gold mine. Jesus fucking Christ. It's almost 7 a.m. Like, I feel like I shouldn't have to think of these things. So, haunted gold mine. So, Sifren and Scars. The actual change was an additional 10 seconds. Scars suggested exactly that. Sithrin. Plus 10 seconds build time. All right, well, that's case open and shut, my friends. Dark Ritual cooldown. Nobody actually suggested it first, but a bunch of people agreed with. Dark Ritual mana given back. Verbrecher. Okay, Bonditos. <laughs> Fucking hell. Dark Ritual converts 33, 50, 70% of HP into Lich mana. Down from 33, 60, 99. Thirty-three sixty-six hundred to thirty-three fifty-five eighty. So they nerfed it even more than what I suggested. Okay, I mean we can see it came from him pretty much. All right. Um, Wand of Illusion. Save Orca, Sithren, Remo. Just want to do in charge. Yeah, same. And then Sithrin. No mention of illusion. Introduce the new thorn sore item. <laughs> yeah, I don't see it there. Must be an error. Or maybe this is like for other stuff than one legion because he says Legion Doom Horn. Okay, we'll put Save Orcas and Remo. We saw for a fact the one of it because we only count this one of illusion, like this is not listed. Maybe he didn't have time. And then one of mana still a bunch of people agreed with, but I mean we can check. I'm a bit surprised actually. I would have expected someone to make a suggestion around that. No, no mention here. No. Uh yeah, I don't think anyone went into a great deal. Yeah. So this one doesn't didn't come from anyone. So the total that I've got here. At first I was only writing the one person that suggested it first, but then at the end there was a whole bunch of people that were all agreed with the exact same change or very close to it. So then I started adding more people. That all of the ones that he initially, or all of the ones that agreed with the exact change that went through, because I couldn't tell which one it was that suggested it first. But this is the final number. I don't know if you guys get the tally yourself, but this is what I've got Remo, seven changes, Safid, four changes, and Wingwalker, three, Agent, three, Scars, eight, 
Grubby 5, Neo 1, Monk 1, Happy 2, Save Orcas 4, Sithrin 4, and Verbrecher 1. And we're the we are April the 3rd right now. And to end this discussion with, I would like to again take a quick look at what's been going on with uh with the tournament results and uh, who's doing well, who isn't. So yeah, actually, this is kind of funny. X Lords rank one because he keeps smashing everyone in Meister Shaft, so he never loses a match. Whereas Happy played a bunch of off race recently and then lost some matches. But yeah, human underrepresentation is pretty pretty big here. Fortitudes eleventh as the first human. After that, the next one is in eighteenth. Really, really tough time for the humans. Night elves are kind of rising. And in earnings, I think. We already checked earlier. It's undead right now, then elf. Elf is catching up. It really feels like this was a good patch for elf because now they got a really good matchup against human, I think, with, with this new emulation. But it's still happy, lean on top, but then low lights, moon. There's a lot of different elves, that's the thing. Colorful. It would be interesting to follow like how this develops. WZ champions wise, I feel like this is almost the least relevant of everything between ELO and earnings, but on the ladder we're seeing some trends where some elves are doing really well. Infi is currently playing a lot of elf. He got to rank seven with his night elf. 2k5 MMR. And as we know, Infi usually likes to pick what's best. So yeah, currently very, very high rank, especially for a guy that barely plays in tournaments. And then Colorful, Low Lights, here, Elegant. Elegant came back, he was like a massive Demon Hunter fan. And LeMay, reaching an all-time 2400 MMR. Who would have thought? Hunter, rank 34, Pato, rank 35. 20 players out of 50 are Night Elves. 13 Orcs, 8 Humans, 8 Undeads. And the funny thing is, Happy has 3 accounts, so it's really 6 Undeads. And Night Elves, a lot of Grandmaster representation. We can have a look at quickly at recent tournaments as well. Warcraft Survival Battle. Moon one, so in second, Lin third, Sock fourth. Recent Pet Cup 13. Lin one, Lolite second, Happy third, Moon fourth. And the season one earlier, we can check the Ted Cup, this, this W Champions Finals. These are all the recent tournaments. So Ted Cup 12 before that was also Happy, Moon, then Focus, then Kaho. One human made it to top eight. And the previous Warcraft Survival Battle, instead of Sock, it was Jimmy Co that made fourth. The Inot Cup. In every one of those tournaments, humans get dumpstered. It's, it's crazy. Like the best we can get is like a fourth place. And I think WT Champions Finals was the one where we almost got some hope because Sock was playing out of his mind, made it to the semis, then kind of got smacked by Happy. Did win the third place match though. That was nice. That was in February. And one of them that was not listed actually, which was a big one also, was the recent TP League. I don't know why it's not there. Uh, 
uh, monthly one. That was one of the biggest tournaments recently with 5k5 prize. That was literally like what? From mid March, early March to yeah, late March. And in this, Fortitude played out of his freaking mind. He won against Happy in the group. And then Happy eliminated Chemico, and then his second group. Oh, sorry, in the brackets. He won against Sok, then he lost to Lin. Then he won against Lolaet, but then he lost to Colorful. And then he was so Happy first, Lin second. Colorful third, and then human again. The best we can get is still like. After playing a fucking insane tournament, by the way, it was a fourth place. I agree, the balance patches are memes. Nothing you can do. Human doesn't exist in Warcraft 3 Pro scene. Overall, yeah, I don't know. If, like, if I would go that far, they exist, but then they don't exist in the top tier, unfortunately. And then if you want to say, like, well, you know, Infi and TH stop playing, well, ETH is actually playing a little bit here and there. But Infi literally will play any other race than human. If you look at him. Infi is actually playing quite a bit. I, I think he just has no desire to play in tournaments. But he keeps getting tricked by tournaments. Because a lot of tournaments are saying. If you want to cast tournaments. You have to play in it. It's like their way to get those superstars. Like Infi, Fly and TH playing in it. So they end up playing. And they don't really want to throw their games. Because they're competitive. So then they just end up playing pretty good. And they beat a lot of very competitive people. But the thing is, he hasn't played human in forever. It just doesn't happen anymore. Uh, look. This is Infi's 2023 starts here. Night of, night of, night of, undead, night of, night of, orc, night of, night of, night of, undead, 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 night of, night of, night of. So he literally will play anything. But human at this point. Even Orc. Even picks Orc. He actually had a really close series against uh, Happy in uh, Show Cup 2 with Orc. He beat some good elves with Undead. I think he plays Undead against Elf. He plays Elf against most things, right? So yeah, let me know what you guys think um, about all of this in general. Again, this is the final number that we got so i think i feel like i wanted to record something to talk about who had the most influence on the patch where did the changes come from these are the people that made patch notes and suggestions and then blizzard listened and yeah these were the changes that were applied from them like the, the amount of them 